everyone, I'm Joni. Welcome to Creekside Maples. Today I'm going to show you how I make my organic kombucha. This drink is loaded with probiotics and all kinds of goodness. You can search um, to find out that for yourself, but we're going to get right into it. It's very simple and the first stage all you need is a large gallon sized jar. <clears throat> you need some hot water. You need six tea bags and they recommend that you do a mix of both black tea and green tea and so that's what we're going to do so it's very simple put in my three black tea bags just plain and then I have three of green tea here now I'm going to add in all of this boiling water right into my jar. Now, this obviously is not going to fill the whole way. <clears throat> and I only do half or this much of the boiling water. This is a time, a uh, little time saver that I have found out for myself. So I will explain why in just a minute. This is going to cool down and then I'm going to be right back shortly after this cools a bit and we'll finish up. Don't go away. So welcome back. So what we have done is we have allowed this brew to cool for about 25 minutes. And what I'm going to do now is just simply remove these tea bags. It's important that you don't use metal. You need to use either plastic or a wooden spoon. And I will tell you why in just a little bit when we get to that part. You know, in case you don't know about kombucha, I can tell you it is one of the healthiest drinks that you could ever, ever buy. It's available in the stores, but it's so simple to make, which is what I'm showing you here today. Make sure I got them all. One, two, three, four, five. I should have one more left in there. No, nope. one, two, three, four, five, six. We got them. It is so, so very healthy for you and so easy to make. So this basically, obviously, is just some brewed tea. But what we want to do is we want to fill our jar up. So I have some more. You, you want to use non-chlorinated water. So be sure that that is um, available to you if you live in a city and are on town water. Um, you're going to want to go out and buy some bottled water. So fill it up <clears throat> about to, I don't know if you can see, um, we don't want it full yet because we're going to add a little more. Leave, um, you know, a couple inches of space there at the top. Now, we're going to add in one cup of pure cane sugar. You want the pure cane sugar, not your white refined sugar. So stir in one cup to your one gallon of your tea. Again, I have a wooden spoon here. Stir it all up good. And honestly, folks, right now, this would be just a great tea to drink. But remember, we are making kombucha. So the reason that I let it cool and I brought it to more of a room temperature with adding the room temperature water, and now it's you know, it's room temperature to touch, is because we are going to add in a live culture. Now this is where it gets fun. This is where the magic happens because you are going to add in what is called a SCOBY. Now, if you're brand new to this, like I was not long ago, this can look really kind of um, strange. But what SCOBY stands for is Symbiotic Culture of Bacteria and Yeast. And that's exactly what it is. 
It is this little deal right here. It almost looks like a jelly pancake, if you can see that. Well, if um, my cameraman wants to zoom in a little bit. And you can order one of these on Amazon, you Google. Um, if you have some local health food stores, you can buy them. They're not expensive, but you need one of these. But the key is this has, because it's live, hot water will kill this. This is living, and I have some, some of my starter fluid in here, which is why I did not fill this to the top. So I'm going to add in my starter fluid here the rest of the way. Let's spill it. And then this SCOBY pancake, we just lay them in there. Now, sometimes it floats to the bottom. Do not be worried or alarmed about that. It will eventually, this is going to ferment for several days. This will rise to the top. And each time you do a new brew, this SCOBY will grow a new layer because it is live and that's why we put in the pure cane sugar because it needs the sugar to feed off it. Now you can see it um, kind of sinking down a little bit. Not a problem at all. This is all you do at this stage. So we've got the gallon of water, you have your six tea bags, three black, three green, one cup of your pure organic cane sugar, your SCOBY, and now just get a, a, a cotton cloth, a linen, a, uh, anything that's kind of breathable, and cover that over. And take an elastic band. It has to breathe. And I just cover that just like this. Now, you are going to want to set this away somewhere in your kitchen. Um, it has to be kept at your normal house temperature. Um, it cannot be uh, out exposed to the light. So if you need to, sometimes what I do is I'll, I will wrap this again with a second towel, set it away, and depending on the temperature in your house, leave this for anywhere from 10, 12, 14 days. You may need 16 or 17 days. So how you're going to know it's done after 12, 14 days, take the band off and of course by then that scoby is going to have grown another layer it may look a little odd uh, maybe a little bubbly don't worry about it and again do not use metal but take a wooden spoon or sometimes what i do is i'll just take a little straw and push that push that scoby back and you watch and, and taste a little bit and what you're looking for is you want the sweetness to be all gone. You want it to have just a little bit of a, kind of a vinegary taste. And you can tailor this to your preference. Now, again, I was mentioning the benefits. Um, I wrote a few of them down. My uh, memory isn't the best. So it is a liver detox. Um, it will boost your energy. It will boost your immunity. It is great for your gut health, and we are hearing all kinds of new news every day in the health community about that. It is a probiotic, and it is an antioxidant, and there's many, many, many more benefits that I haven't even mentioned today. Lots of benefits for you to look into. So this is a very simple, healthy drink to make. Um, you can do this for just pennies. And I know you're going to want to try this. So what I'd like for you to do is leave a comment or two down below and tell us if you have tried kombucha. And maybe some of you have already made the kombucha. Um, and just tell us your thoughts on it if you found it's helped you and made a difference in your health. Thank you for watching. Um, go like our channel and subscribe to our channel. And um, give us a thumbs up. You know that little bell? Some of you are new to YouTube, I know, and you hit that little bell, it will notify you when we have posted a new one. So thank you again. God bless you all. See you in the next one. Hey, before we sign off, this is the cameraman, which happens to be her husband, Tony. Um, can you flavor that?
You can, but that is afterwards. That's after this fer ferment is done. This is the first stage. I see. I will make another video later on of what we do with this once it's done. You can flavor all kinds of possibilities. And what room temperature do you think works best? Well, it's your household temperature. I think um, we keep ours around 72, thereabouts. Now, can you keep it in a closet, the door closed, or anything like that? You can, as long as it's not cold in that closet. And then, of course, you don't want to forget about it because, you know, then you're maybe going to have a whole other <laughs> drink on your hands. I see. Well, it sounds good. Very good. We love it here. We, we drink eight ounces a day. I've been making this for several months now. And here in Canada, um, it costs anywhere from four to five dollars for a bottle. And I can, out of this gallon jar that I make for literally pennies of cost, I get seven bottles. I save my bottles and wash them out and reuse them. So as you can see, it's very, very efficient.